Daniela Bernardi, who is a staff developer advocate at Twitter. And he's going to talk about the issues around um, abusive and irrelevant content on the internet and on, on API platforms and what is happening and what's cooking for uh, helping developers to make uh, these tools great again. <laughs> Hi, Daniela. And Hi. Uh, go ahead. Thanks for having me, first, first of all. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, and yes, like you said, we're going to cover uh, this and some other topics as well, all related to uh, serving the public conversation and what is going to be the future for uh, platforms um, that uh, deal with content uh, like, you know, like ours, Twitter. Uh, what about me? Uh, working uh, developer relations at Twitter, so my job. I, I'm actually an engineer as a background, but uh, what I do on a daily basis is actually to connect with users and developers and listening to their feedback and understand how we can make a platform that can uh, really be inclusive of um, everyone and make uh, uh, the world when when we share content uh, a world where developer can actually improve the experience, not just uh, get data from it. Um, you probably um bumped into uh a lot of articles uh this year uh the united nations on top of that said we were tackling not just a pandemic but also an infodemic it means that it's hard to distinguish what's uh, uh not attendable from uh, reasonable information or objective information that really contributes to the progress of the public conversation um and this process is even right now, largely manual, and it presents scaling challenges. Uh, for example, it's still very hard to get uh, to study a topic when it's shared online. And you, if you want to get a full data set, there really aren't very clear pathways. Um, also, how do we direct people to the right information? How do we contrast and report inaccurate details or even misleading information? We saw platforms and we still see platforms trying to get to the root of the uh, issue. Uh, back in 2018, Jack Dorsey made a commitment to increase the health of the public conversation. And the public conversation, we define it as the conversation that we have every day on the internet. Uh, could be our thoughts, could be the way our, we express ourselves, or the way we receive and consume information. But what's interesting here is that uh, Jack doesn't just give the definition of the public conversation. It gives also a definition of health. And what's the health of the public conversation in this sense? It's when we uh, refer to any activity that adds to uh, our lives in uh, a positive way. Uh, we go online to learn, to inform ourselves, to connect with others, to keep ourselves uh, updated on the last memes. When we chose to make our collective interactions public, we actually shape a global conversation. And that should advance us as a society uh, collectively. But then when we look back at the actual implementation, what's the API design or the developer experience that allows us to make that much progress? How can we design a platform for developers so it's health oriented? Because if we look at it, this is a challenge that platforms had in the past. This is nothing new. It's actually built into the design of uh, uh, probably any REST platforms. Uh, so API platforms were designed to work with objects. But then the notion of the object stops at what an object is. Uh, APIs know where an object is. They know what the type of the object is. Obviously, they return the content of the object. but they act in a silo and they have no awareness uh, of the context of the object itself. So what surrounds the object, what are the circumstances around it? So in order to enable users and developers with tools for healthier conversations, we probably need to design APIs that are aware of their surrounding context. And like I said, right now, endpoints don't say much about uh, their surrounding context. We have the content, we have plenty of metadata, but the ability to really frame the object into a much larger picture is always left out of an API product. And here's an example. We're guilty of that. Suppose you wanted to get all the tweets sent on Mother's Day. What would you do? You would probably go and search by keywords. Um, 
you'll have to look for a specific text, maybe hashtags, uh, and you get an initial set of tweets. But this is largely incomplete because conversation can shift a lot in tone and context. Imagine just what happened this year uh, with uh, a lot of mothers in the front line who couldn't really celebrate the way they deserved. So this is what uh, an incomplete keyword query will look like. And like I said, you know, it's very incomplete. What if someone uses a slightly different set of words? What if there's a typo in the tweet? And what if you imagine how big the search query should be to capture the full conversations in many languages across the world? So how can we make an API aware of the surrounding context in this case? Well, I think artificial intelligence can help here, uh, natural language processing in particular. Uh, platform invested a lot of effort into AI in the past few years. I mean, their efforts to help moderations or uh, internal processes. We seem to be in a fairly mature stage to see useful applications that can be opened up to the broader developer ecosystem. One way to achieve contextual awareness is by annotating text through uh, named entity recognition. So we can uh, map text to things like names and places. Here's how it will work. Even if they're not in the same language, these tweets are all about the same topic. It's a holiday called Mother's Day. So we can start representing things like tweets, not just in form of keywords and hashtags, but actually in form of entities. In uh, a health-oriented design, those three tweets and many others shared the same two annotations, the holiday and that specific holiday called the Mother's Day. So we can use entities to get tweets about the specific context we're looking for. Uh, so we can go from uh, a search query like this to something like this. You just search for the specific ID of that topic. And then you can always complement uh, and restrict or expand results using the original uh, keywords and search as we were used to. And the real power and the reason this works well is because uh, things like named entity recognition are aware of the surrounding context of a particular piece of information. So let's take this uh, tweet, for example. Tigers will be back in San Francisco playing against the Giants. If you follow the previous speaker, Alona, uh, actually, she framed it well when she said that Americans often forget that not everybody plays baseball uh, because I come from Europe and this might not be familiar to me and might not be familiar to you as, uh, as an audience in Europe. Uh, so we need help to understand the surrounding context of this tweet. So we, if we pass this into uh, the API and health-oriented API, uh, the recognized entities extracted would be exactly the Detroit Tigers and the San Francisco Giants. And note that San Francisco is not an entity in this case. This is because we're not talking about the city of San Francisco. We're talking about the team based in San Francisco. So like I said, I come from Europe too, and uh, I have a limited understanding of who the Tigers and the Giants are. I know they're sports teams now, but of which sport exactly, I still don't know. And this is exactly the problem with the lack of contextual awareness. So in our new API, we actually offer those contextual annotations and they're available to everybody out of the box. Um, so when you look up a tweet, you can actually get this. And in this case, we can also look at the overall context. And we're seeing that we're talking about baseball. So those are baseball teams and specifically major league baseball. So this is how platforms can shape their API for uh, help. We're seeking here a radically different approach for our uh, new API platform. So we know developers want to improve the public conversation. So we need to offer that new, this new developer experience to those developers uh, who want to make the experience better for everybody in turn. Uh, but they also feel sometimes they don't have the means to make that positive impact. And to make sure they do, we need to have a two-folded strategy. So here's what we're doing. From one side, we give developers the tool to better understand the public conversation. So this is basically all you saw so far, and it's available right now. And second, we need to give developers better tools so they can help the users have a better experience online. They can improve the experience online so they can limit the amount of uh, content that's relevant uh, and that they still have to see and witness. And an example of this is the COVID-19 stream endpoint uh, we released uh, earlier this year. This is an API uh, and it's kind of an unprecedented offer if you think of uh, the history of uh, uh, 
like social media platforms in general. I don't want to mention specifically ours. Um, it gives developers a real time stream of tweets about this specific topic. So using name then recognition uh, and uh, all the public conversation, public tweets um, are filtered through this annotation. And uh, the result is you can get a real time stream of conversation about this particular topic. And it's something that we made available for free to researchers, to academics, uh, everybody with a valid legitimate use case to study and understand uh, the disease. Um, so we saw a lot uh, uh, of uh, good things happening from uh, this data set uh, as the world was coming together and slowly is coming together to protect our communities and seek answers to this pressing challenge. Like I said, this stream serves a real time data sets of uh, tweets filtered by a context annotation. So again, name them to recognition on COVID-19. And this API only returns tweets that are marked as COVID-19 uh, only. So imagine this is a global conversation. You know, Like I said before, you can't just filter it with uh, a set of hashtags or a set of keywords. Um, it spans across uh, all the possible languages in, in the world. And through named entity recognition and machine learning, you can actually do this. So this is exactly what we what we did in order to uh, get a better understanding and better developer experience to developers. So first, we give developers the tool to better understand uh, the public conversation through context annotations and entities. And second, we give better tools so they can help the users uh, have a better experience online. So this API is actually you know built uh, thinking of it in the, a legacy world. Uh, you would need to basically do all these four things on the left-hand side. You need access to the data set. Then you would set up the right keywords to get the best possible corpus trial and error to get a corpus that will work reasonably well. Then you have to train uh, your uh, own uh, models to make sure that your entity extraction works as intended. It doesn't really uh, yield false positives. You have to uh, get bandwidth, storage, compute, etc a lot of money and a lot of effort. Um, there are also some entity recognition API out there in the marketplace, but they're not trained on a data set of tweets. So for maximum accuracy, you would need to train your own models. Uh, and in the new health-oriented world, you actually have uh, a platform that can factor all these considerations into one single API, which is exactly what we did with the COVID-19 stream. So there's no doubt a health-oriented design like the one I just described enables a better developer experience, which in turn can have positive implications in the ecosystem. So with one single endpoint, developers now can research the spread of the disease, understand how misinformation spreads, uh, build solutions for a crisis management or a emergency response uh, communication within uh, communities, uh, develop further machine learning on uh, top of the one we already have. So. Uh, the scientific community can, act, can actually help answer key questions about uh, uh, the disease and maybe many other use cases that uh, we're actually looking uh, to our community to help us understand. So giving better understanding via context awareness is just one of the aspects of uh, an health-oriented design. Building better tools is the second aspect. So for content platforms, an aspect of this is uh, health of the public conversation, like I mentioned before. It goes without saying that everybody should feel safe and comfortable sharing their thoughts on the, the internet. Sometimes people receive uh, replies that are irrelevant or maybe off topic or even toxic. So they might find it difficult or even not possible sometimes to prevent these problems. It's not ideal for a platform and it's not ideal for uh, people using the platform. So last year to try and curb this, we added a way to hide replies to a conversation. People hide replies for many reasons, including to remove contents that are abusive or uh, irrelevant or distracting. And while many people want the benefit of hiding replies to improve the quality of their conversation, uh, some people receive such a large number of replies that's very difficult to, or even overwhelming to do so without help. And additionally, some people might want to um, have the ability to uh, have somebody else manage uh, hiding replies or automatically hide certain replies, maybe offensive or abusive replies. So even when you have the tools, you might not have the time, the energy, or even the emotional fortitude to deal with this. And this is where a health-oriented design can help. Uh, this is where developers can help, given a good developer experience for them. 
when an API platform has tools to solve problems at scale like this, developers can help uh, all the users and all the platform have a better and safer experience. An example of this or a health-oriented API uh, to improve the public conversation is something we launched uh, earlier this year called the High Replies API. With this API, developers can build tools that help people high replies to their tweets faster, more efficiently, or even in circumstances where that normally give up. And it's an API that increases public uh, conversation and healthy participation in the public conversation. So a user can delegate hiding replies to an app based on the criteria the app defined, just like this. A user tweets as, as usual. And maybe behind the scenes, an app integrates with this API and checks for replies. And this can even happen in real time. The app can then check for uh, one or more criteria that are being defined by the app itself. So for example, an app can check if the user wants to hide replies containing one or more words or coming from specific users. Uh, natural language processing here can also help, again, to hide replies that are off topic or not relevant. Um, there's um, actually an example uh, with uh, uh, a unit within Google that has an API uh, to uh, detect toxic language, and I'll show you in just a moment. Um, so you can plug any of these options and then hide the reply accordingly. And multiple apps can also cooperate together to hide different types. So one app can specialize on uh, abuse, another app uh, could specialize in uh, keeping people on topic, another app can uh, specialize of hiding replies that are memes or uh, images and so on and so forth. Um, so you may think this is something actually that's far into the future, but like I said, this is actually something that exists right now and uh, a, lot of, a lot of developers already have embraced um, this uh, new uh, take on the public conversation. So an, an example of uh, this health-oriented API is the Perspective API from uh, Jigsa, which is um, a unit within Google. Uh, this API is trained to basically score the perceived impact that a comment might have on a conversation. Developers, publishers, they can all use this uh, score to help moderators do their jobs or maybe to help readers find uh, uh, relevant information easy, uh, easier. So we can connect that to another API, just like we did with the high replies API. In this example, you can actually integrate that with Twitter directly. So you link a Twitter account, and in real time, if you get a reply that has a, like, high, a high likelihood of being toxic, it gets hidden automatically without user action. And when you enable, as a platform, experiences like this, and users are not the only one to benefit. Like I said, uh, it's at the developer experience, the broader developer experience as uh, an ecosystem. Your platform immediately creates a whole new set of apps that cooperate, that just not work uh, alone. They can do that, but they can also uh, be part of a broader ecosystem uh, where uh, you can just embed those kind of plugins into your main experience. And this puts developers front and center into the app, so it opens up to new opportunities for them as well. Um, this is an example where, um, you know, in the legacy world, we saw users rely on themselves to improve the main online experience, um, which is obviously challenging for internal processes as well. The more uh, the user is confused, the more they can ask support to solve this for them. Um, and uh, might create actually experiences that might limit the creation of content in a way that would not scale well across multiple languages or markets. In a health-oriented world instead, developers are front and center. So you build a developer experience that actually put developers front and center to contribute to the main user experience, directing them and helping them with tools to perform tasks like moderation that were too cumbersome to tackle. So this new API design embeds into the core experience and developers don't have to build alternatives. They have a place in your main experience instead, and they can use their skills to improve it for anybody. So this is the twofold strategy, uh, better tools for better understanding, better tools to action their understanding, and um, this is how you can create uh, a developer experience based on an ecosystem that respects and improves everyone's experience online. And with that, if you want to learn more, uh, there's always more in slides there. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. This was uh, riveting. If uh, somebody would like to um, uh, see some sort of holistic written understanding of what you talked about where could they go where could they find this 
So in the short link to the code slash API days, uh, that's linked to the developer portal and the main documentation we have, all this explained. Obviously, anybody wants to chat more, uh, feel free to reach out here on Hopin or uh, on Twitter directly and we can chat even, even further. Um, but there's a, a lot that uh, we want to enable uh, for developers like you know this kind of experiences. So um, there's definitely space in the in the developer documentation, the Twitter community forums as well. Uh, very happy to expand on uh, any of these aspects. And obviously, we're rebuilding the new Twitter API, so you're going to see more of this announcements and more of this philosophy uh, really embedded into our announcements and our products. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. I hope it's going to be effective. <laughs> yes, well, we're already seeing a lot of uh, adoption from uh, from developers. So part of the the things I actually explained already exist. We launched this, this throughout the year, and we've seen, especially for high replies, a lot of interest uh, from uh, developers all over the world. Especially developers who might have uh, knowledge in a specific market or language. Uh, mm -hmm. We obviously are still incredibly so very small. So we focus mm -hmm. on uh, a few languages uh, like English or Spanish. But imagine like you know Paris in the uh, if you have uh, companies or developers who actually master artificial intelligence in uh, in French, mm -hmm. uh, I, would, I would be great if we could talk to them so we can actually further our um, efforts to improve the public conversation together. Yes, I see that uh, my colleague Katalin has put the link in the chat in the meantime. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I would like to call onto the stage our next speaker.